Hello and welcome to another video. This video is a follow up to my carp fishing in France at Etang de Manoir. Firstly I wanted to say thanks very much for everyone who watched that. I think it had 10,000 views in the first five days um, and loads of you are subscribing to the channel as well so you we obviously enjoyed that video, thanks very much. But one thing that was missing from that video was the tactics used to catch those two massive fish. Um, I caught them right at the end of the week just before I was about to leave so I didn't have time to tell you these successful tactics so I did promise um, a video all about the rig and um, you know I said I was going to talk you through the bait and everything so here we are this is my sort of Tang de Manoir tactics video I'm going to run you through how to tie the rig that I've been using recently and the one that caught my 64 pounder that you saw on that video I'll link the video below if you haven't seen it but um, yeah this video is going to be that rig and the tactics to catch the second biggest fish in the lake right guys firstly then here's the components you'll need to tie this rig um, <coughs> now you'll see when I've tied this rig that it's the most versatile rig that you can tie really because um, I was using <coughs> a withy pool rig for most of my pop-ups and then like a blowback rig for my sort of bottom baits and wafter fishing but I wanted something that would do everything and also could fish with any size of bait you know the thing with a normal blowback rig the, <coughs> the hair is a fixed length um, so you know you kind of set it to the length of the bait that you want to be using but I was going away to Blue Pool in Reading so I knew I'd be using fairly small baits there and then I wanted to go to France to a Tang de Manoir so I wanted a rig that would kind of cover me for both of those lakes um, and if I wanted to change to a double 20 mil boilie I could do or if I wanted to scale right down to a single bit of plastic corn then I could do that as well you know um, so I needed a solution really to um, to fishing with a hair um, and also I like the idea of a rig that can be a pop-up or a bottom bait or a wafter rig so you only ever need to tie one rig uh, and this so far this rig has been doing well for me um, I'm not claiming that I've invented it or anything um, it's very similar to a couple of other rigs that are out there but uh, this is just my sort of version um, so firstly the components that we need I've got a size 5 angling iron dura point hook that's a nice kind of a wide gate pattern um, with a an interned eye and a fairly long shank it's got really good turning properties and once once it's in it kind of stays in you know I haven't lost a fish on those yet and uh, that landed my 64 pounder so they're definitely strong enough um, I've got some semi stiff coated braid some AB shots to go on the rig because this is going to be the pop-up version of this rig but if you're using it with a wafter or a bottom bait you can just use putty to sort of help sink it down um, here I've got some of the angling iron hook ring swivels there the sort of bait swivels if you like that go on the shank of the hook and some of their um, their shank stop beads as well and also some shrink tube there this was like a sample pack that I got from Angley 9 but um, I do use their their, um, their shrink tube as well and then I've got some bait floss there for attaching your bait and a lighter just for blobbing the bait down as well so let's get into how we tie the rig right so first of all you're going to take your coated braid and take off around about 15 or so inches just so you've got a nice amount to work with don't want to cut it too short because you, you don't want to be left with a rig that's that's not long enough basically so yeah then you want to strip off uh, around about four inches from the end um, doesn't need to be exact but just enough to sort of tie a knotless knot with then we're going to take one of the size 5 angling iron dura point hooks With that hook, we're going to tie a knotless knot, which I'm sure you've all seen before, but I'll just do it quickly. So I'm going to come in, because there's no hair, I can actually come in this side, um, so through the front of the hook, and I want to tie about a six turn knotless knot. 
So, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then from the back, this is quite important, well, very important, you come through the back and that means that the hook link is exiting the hook on the point side there, so you come in that way and out that way, that's very important. Um, apologies if you've seen that a million times before, but not everyone would have seen that, um, you know, if they're new to carp fishing, so I thought I'd run you through that quickly. But anyway, just chop off the tag end there. So you've got your hook nicely attached to your hook link material there. And then we're going to take our, our little hook ring swivel there and put that onto the hook. Mind your fingers when you do this, they are pretty sharp. <laughs> and, and then with your shank stop bead there, you just want to go, you see how it's got a wide end and a, and a narrow end, you want to go through the wide end first so that the hook ring swivel hits up against the, the wider bit otherwise it can get stuck on there you, and you want it to sort of move up and down so that's that on there like that okay next you want a piece of shrink tubing and you want to cut off approximately an inch or so give or take and then trim the end of that at a slight angle which I think just helps it to flip and turn a bit easier. And then you're gonna thread that down your hook link. So the, the end that you cut, um, you wanna go in the other end. So the uncut end, you wanna go in, bring that down and that goes over the eye just enough to cover the whipping of your knotless knot. The next job then is to tie a figure of eight loop at the other end, making sure to make the rig the length that you want. In this case, I'm going for about, um, probably about 10 inches, I'd say. And also when you tie your figure of eight loop knot, make sure your loop's quite long because that acts as a bit of a, a boom when you're casting, this doubled up section, and it will help kick it away from the lead and stop tangles on the cast. So you double up the section and make another loop in the doubled up section, and then you twist that around, which wraps the, the loop around the smaller loop if you like and then put this one through that loop that you just made and you see there that it forms a figure of eight and then just wet that down with a little bit of saliva and pull it tight and then trim off your tag end being careful not to cut the actual hook link. Right, so all that's left to do now is to steam that down to form a bit of a, a kicker and then we're gonna, because I'm making this into a, a pop-up rig, we're gonna put one of these AB shot just below the hook there to um, to counterbalance it and then I'm probably going to put a little bit of putty sort of just under halfway down there just to help sink it so I'll do that now and I'll show you the finished rig in a minute right guys so here's the finished rig um, as I said blob of putty on there which just helps to sink that bit first and, and kick it kick it away from the lead as it lays down and then I've got my shot here which just counterbalances it because we're 
using a popper, that's what I caught my my 64 pounder on. So I've put that on there to counterbalance the popper. But if I was using it for a bottom bait, I would just um, put a bit of putty just on the where the where the coating starts there, just to to pull it down into the fish's mouth as it as it sort of drags over, you know. Um, but yeah, um, all that's left now is to put the hook bait on. So we'll do that next. So the hook bait that I caught my 64 pounder on was the Richworth pineapple pop-ups, which um, I don't use very often, to be honest. I, I tend to use um, the S-Core, the sort of original ones, and, and if I'm lucky, I can get hold of some of the white ones, and I use those, which have been really good for me. But um, on that session in France, we were really struggling, and Elaine, who was fishing around the other side, had a 45 pounder on, on yellow. And these were the only yellow um, pop-ups that I had. <laughs> See their bright yellow there. So um, that's what I went with. And I was fishing over corn. Um, so, you know, it sort of matches matches the colour. So I went with uh, one of those. And I caught that big fish. So um, it obviously worked. So we'll take one of those. And using a baiting needle, we just pierce the bait there and then we're going to take some bait floss and <clears throat> on your rig you're going to go through your little hook ring swivel that we put on earlier and double it up on itself like that we're going to take the baiting needle, hook it on to the bait floss, close the gate of the needle and then push the bait down to pull the floss through the bait and down onto that swivel that's on the shank of the hook and then just slide the bait down so that the bowel of the swivel is just inside the bait like that. Next we're going to trim off the excess and just blob that down with a lighter. I find a windproof lighter like that is very handy to have because obviously you can do it in all conditions. So we're just going to blob that down, mind your fingers. And once it gets to there just squash it and that forms a bit of a a blob there that stops the bait coming off <clears throat> and that's your finished rig really just pops up ever so slightly off the bottom keeps it out of harm's way of any debris that might be on the bottom and you know as I said it can be used for any size of bait so if you wanted you could fish a double pop up which is what Elaine actually did when we we're in France, um, you know, similar. She was using a Ronnie rig, but you know, this this is like a Ronnie rig. But I feel like you can use it for any um, any bait, you know, bottom baits and wafters and everything. Like I said, so yeah, give it a go, guys. It's it's not that dissimilar to a German rig, I suppose. Um, you know, with the swivel on the shank and everything. But I feel like the German rig, because you're using a stiff material all the way through, you can't really use it with a pop up. And also I like that bit of flexibility that having a stripped back section gives you so the fish can sort of take the bait from any angle. Um, you know, if it comes this way and, and sucks it up, it can still get it in its mouth. Um, and that extra bit of flexible there it sort of helps the hook to, to drop down when it's picked up as well. So, you know, a very good rig and it obviously worked for me in France. So give it a go, guys. Uh, next I'm going to talk you through just briefly the, the bait that I was using on that session and also the spot where I had the big one. Right guys, so I hope you uh, found that interesting, the, the rig tie in there. So, you know, it's, it's nothing revolutionary. It's very similar to a German rig with the swivel on the shank. But that bit of flexibility in the hook link just helps it to be a bit more versatile really and you can use it for pop-ups or anything, as I said, and different sized baits as well. Um, so the spot where I had that big fish, 
It was actually out in the open water of Weedy Bay at the Tang de Manwa. Um, Elaine and Debbie were fishing in there the first couple or three nights that we were there, so I couldn't fish there myself, but they moved around um, after having a couple of quiet nights. And that enabled me, because I was fishing on the spit in the lake, it enabled me to put a fourth rod out into Weedy Bay. And Jason, one of the owners, was kind enough to say, there's a gravel patch out there. Um, if you have a lead around, you'll find it, you know. Um, so that's what I did. I've leaded around some something like 13 and a half to 14 wraps, I think it was, out towards the corner of the lake. There was this gravel spot. So I baited that really heavily with pellets, corn, crumbed up escort. Um, and I think that was about it. Oh, and like whole different size uh, escort as well. And put quite a lot out, you know, sort of four or five kilos. And then I just fished my little pineapple pop up over the top, and that was the tactics that, that caught the fish. You know, nothing revolutionary, nothing complicated. Just you know, put a bit of food in a in a good spot. You know, a nice clear spot in open water. And um, it was kind of on a bit of a patrol route when the fish come through the channel from the main body of the lake into that weedy bay. They sort of, I would imagine, they swim kind of over that spot anyway and there was a few fish showing around the area so I knew I was kind of in the right area um, and we were struggling all week sort of fishing fairly light baiting tactics so I went fairly heavy you know the last night I had a bit of bait to use up in the bucket didn't want it to be going off um, on the way home I didn't want it to go to waste so I thought well what have I got to lose you know last night put out a load of bait so yeah I went with um, something like yeah, it must have been a good five kilos of bait on that rod. And I've had the Richworth Escort pellets and the, the new sort of mixed pellets that they're doing. Um, yeah, crumbed up Escort, whole and chopped and different sized Escort in there as well. And a load of sweet corn, like a whole catering sized tin of sweet corn in there as well. Because um, I'd heard they liked sweet corn and you know, I was fishing a yellow pop up, so I wanted a little fleck of colour in there. And yeah, that was what did it for me. Um, I had that, also had that 35 pounder, which was on the same bait mix. Um, but the hook bait for that one was actually two bits of bait corn, just fished on uh, that same rig. So it shows you the versatility of the rig. And, um, you know, I don't think it really matters about hook bait when you're fishing over a mix of bait like that. You know, you could put most things on, and, the, you know, they're coming and they're just sucking and blowing, and picking up everything that's there so I just thought I'd try a different hook bait and that worked as well so it just so happened that I got lucky on, on two of my rods on the last morning so if you haven't seen that video go and check it out it'll be linked below um, and hopefully you've enjoyed hearing about how I caught those those fish in the dying moments of that trip it was a real hard week difficult conditions and everything and it came good in the very very last couple of hours so yeah happy days caught my new PB and um, the second biggest fish in the lake so yeah that's my tactics uh, my spot and my bait and everything I hope you found that interesting and I hope that helps you you know if you're going out to a Tango Manwa or you know any other lake you want to try a similar tactic to that give it a go and certainly give that rig a go because um, I've had some good fish on it lately I had my PB common on it from Bur Burfield Blue Pool as well so I'll link that video down below um, and I was using it more as a sort of a snowman setup there, so you can see that in that video as well. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. Remember to thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I've got lots more videos coming up. I've got my 2019 road trip, uh, which will be starting very soon. Um, going to a few different lakes on the mainland. So yeah, make sure you check that out. And yeah, we'll see you very soon.